All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going, team? Here, and this is BXJS live stream. And today we are going to be adding the giveaways functionality to the new BXJS website. Before we get started, I want to say that off stream, I've actually ported the design from the existing website to the new one. Um, nothing super fancy here. Just literally copy paste the components, copy paste all the stuff, and you know, format the episodes and links correctly, and that's it. And I deployed the new version. So if you go to bxjs.dev, you will actually see the new version that uses the GraphQL uh, endpoint. And I've added one small thing here. So I've actually took the graph IQL and embedded it into the website. So if you go to bxjs.dev slash graphql, you can actually just, you know, go ahead and play with uh, play with GraphQL there. You can run the queries, you can get the documents. I should probably add some limits here by default because that seems like it will murder my server, but that's a different question. Anyway, the website is now deployed. You can see the ugliest signed in button here, which we will tweak a bit later. But uh, essentially what I wanna do today is I want to um, add the giveaways, right? So I got uh, sent a bunch of conference codes to give away and I got another one coming in a few weeks, I think in two weeks or something. And I, you know, it's it's really annoying to do that by hand. So the plan is to add this functionality to website to basically make Hasura pick the winners and all that stuff. So this is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Hopefully it's not gonna take too long, uh, but yeah, so this is the gist of it. Now, if we go to data, so first of all, you know what? Uh, let's go to Xcali draw and uh, let's create a new one. And what I like to do before starting to actually code things, I like to plan out a bit as to how that looks, right? So first of all, we're gonna have our giveaway here, which is, uh, we're gonna figure out what kind of properties and stuff does it actually has a bit later, but first I wanna, sort of map out the entities we're talking about, right? So giveaway will have prizes, that is for sure. And giveaway will have uh, participants at least, right? So we have participants, particip participants, and those are related to giveaway. And then we're gonna have some of those participants. I'm not sure if that's the best way to map it, but I'm just gonna do it here. It's gonna say winners, right? So it's gonna have X amount of winners. I mean, it might be one, it might be two, it might be 10, I don't know, depending on the number of prizes, right? I think that actually covers it. So I don't think there's any other entities, at least in the very basic case, we don't really care about anything else. Basically user logins, user sees giveaway, enters it, somebody, wins at the end, the user can claim to whoever is the winner can declare the can claim the prize, right? So let us design the schema then. Uh, so I'm going to create new schema, I'm going to call it giveaways. And um, we are going to create a bunch of new tables. So I am running the console. Yes, so we are going to get our migrations nicely created for us, which is great. Okay, so giveaway schema let us create some tables. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna obviously have the giveaway table, which is gonna have ID, which is, you know, created, updated as usual. We're gonna have the name. So this is gonna be our giveaway name. Uh, hey, Marina, welcome to the stream. It's gonna have description. So we need to, you know, provide some additional information as to what it is and if people are interested or not. Uh, we do need and add, I guess, let's call it this way. It's gonna be a timestamp. So we're gonna have the date, time, wherever it ends. Is there anything else we want actually? So I think that's actually it for the giveaway itself, right? So we got the name, we got description, we got the time end, and that's it. Uh, here's the question. So there's the timestamp. Maybe I just go with a date. I'm thinking that, you know, maybe you're overcomplicating it with timestamp because I don't want to run the uh, checks for, hey, if it's ended every hour or anything, just once a day would probably be sufficient. So we're just gonna go with a date. Uh, yes, we're gonna leave it like that. And I think that's fine. So we're gonna see where maybe we will extend it later. Oh, you know what we need? We need winners as well, but I'm, I'm wondering, yes. So I guess we need 
winners and that's gonna be make it Jason B so it's basically yes it's Jason build array so it's just yeah you know what it's fine it's just gonna make it nullable basically okay so we're gonna have an array of winners which will have the user IDs there and this is what we're gonna check use to check whether someone won or not okay so we got the giveaway we got prize right so it's gonna be our prizes column um, again created updated name so this is gonna be name description this is gonna be description I don't know if we're going to use both name and description. We'll see. And then we're going to have a giveaway, which is going to be integer that links to the, uh, well, giveaways, right? So because we have to have some sort of a reference here, giveaway uh, to, um, am I doing the, yes, am I am doing this correctly? There we go. Okay, cool. So the giveaway links to the giveaway ID and that is it. I'm thinking, so one, basically what I'm thinking right now is we need some way to filter what the participants can query, right? So when the, when the giveaway ends, the machine decides, okay, so those guys are the winners. You know what? Maybe we don't need the winners in the giveaway section. Maybe we just say, okay, so if we go here, we can delete the winners field, right? Yes, uh, winners. We can basically say, okay, uh, what? Oh, down my, okay, down migration is fine, whatever. We don't care about that. So we actually want to say owner here, right? Uh, owner, one owner. So whoever is assigned to a specific price is allowed to query it. This way, we don't even have to care about, you know, filtering, restricting access control. We can just basically the winning script that would basically close the giveaway. It would check the giveaway, find the prizes and assign prize to random participants. And that that's going to be it. So it's going to be very straightforward. We don't even have to care about anything else. And then we just say that the user is only allowed to see prizes that are his own, right? Okay, I think that's actually a good way of doing it. Okay, so we got the giveaway. Uh, we should add foreign relationship to the users. So user ID, no wait, uh, owner is gonna be linked to user ID. And I think that's actually it. So this is gonna be our price table. And we also need a table for participants, right? I cannot spell participants. Okay, so again, ID, created, updated, uh, is literally going to be just a giveaway and user. So it's just a mapping table that maps giveaways to the users and nothing else. We don't really care about anything else really. So giveaway is going to map to giveaway ID and then another foreign key. We're going to say that the users, uh, user is going to link to the ID. Okay, that's it. Right, so basically what is gonna happen is when the user says, okay, I wanna enter the giveaway, the participants list will be updated, right? The giveaway just is essentially a description that should end at some point. And then once the giveaway ends, the scr our script will go through the prizes and assign the owners from the list of participants, that's it. So we don't even have to manage any fancy permissions or anything like that. It's going to be super straightforward. Okay. Um, I'm thinking that I would in the long run uh, need to create some sort of a UI on a website because I mean, I guess I can just use the Hasura UI for that, but that sounds like a not exactly efficient way of doing it. It's probably an easier way of doing that, especially considering like we can write a description markdown or something. So, all right, um, we got that. Now what we want to do is we want to make a trigger. Okay, first of all, let's, I guess, let's create some pages in the uh, website so that we can actually see what happens on the website and we can actually observe our changes, right? Okay, so I don't need that. We got the giveaways. Let me just refresh this so we can have the fresh view here. Okay, where's my uh, website? Come on now. What is going on there? Can we please load? There we go. Okay. Something is throttling it quite a bit. Okay, cool. So we got our website. This seems to be working fine. I guess we're going to put the giveaways 
button over here and just make a new page, right? So I think this is like the easiest way. Got our header component and uh, I honestly don't remember where I took this code from, but let's just uh, let's just try to add, I guess it's gonna be another link, right? So we're gonna have a link it says giveaways and uh, yes, this is fine. Let's make it semi bold and uh, LG uh, giveaways. And now it should appear. Okay, that is way too. Okay, so we use the flex wrap here, which is not what we want. Let me think for a second. How do I properly? Oh, right, it should be in the nav probably, right? So this is the main thing, and there is the nav. So we need this giveaways over here. Yeah, not exactly the perfect thing, but. Uh, the full okay let me see what is going on here and why is it so spaced out okay i honestly don't remember how we built it last time so i will have to re-figure out it uh, as we go on okay so we want we actually okay so we do want to have the link next to this one but i guess we want to tweak the sizing so we have this justify between I guess instead of that, we can just say, okay, don't justify anything. And then we have this uh, div class name. So I'm just gonna have a spacer here effectively, right? Which is gonna stretch. Yep, that looks better. So then when it collapses, we actually got this thing, perfect. Uh, but it is not collapsing the way I want it to right now, which means we do have to be in the nav which means that in this case, okay, so let me think for a second. So we got this thing, right? How do I properly do that? Uh, yeah, okay, that's definitely not what I want. Is that just, uh, can I just do that? Stiff class name flex flex one, right? So I can just space it like that. No, okay, what is what is wrong with it? Oh, because this thing is not stretched. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, so we say flex flex one, and this is gonna be either flex. Right, so we just do that basically, right? No, wait a second, did it? Yes, yeah, so that should be. Okay, if we collapse it, Right, okay, that breaks quite a bit of things. Let me think for a second. So how do we move that? Okay, uh, we had this justify, justify between, oh man, me and CSS is just, you know what? We can have it, we can have it over there. It doesn't really matter right now. We can, we can change the design later. Okay, so I'm gonna add some margin on the left to make it a bit more spaced out. It is not spaced out at all for whatever reason. Wait a second, where did I add? Oh, I added to the wrong thing, goddammit. Right, so there we go. I think that should be good, question mark. Uh, right, margin on the right, not the left. There we go, okay. So this looks fine. Oh, wait, I can change the design later. I don't wanna spend like half of the stream just aligning things, <laughs> that's never a good thing. Okay, cool. So we got this and now we need to add our giveaways, giveaways JS page. Oh, by the way, I've also in addition to porting the design from the old website, I've rewritten uh, search, it now uses GraphQL and it is blazingly fast. Like man, let me tell you Postgres full text search is really good. Um, anyway, uh, continuing, we got, I'll just gonna copy paste the whole damn page here. I don't know if we need the whole page. No, wait, that's not the page. That's not what we want. We want um, in, oh yeah, we can copy paste the GraphQL page, right? Because we don't actually need that. So I can remove this thing. We don't need dynamic component. We need BXJS. Okay, so it's gonna be BXJS giveaways. And uh, we are gonna do something here giveaways okay right there we go so we got the giveaways page so now we need to i guess let's create a giveaway right so let's uh, insert something and say okay test giveaway description right uh let's put some mark down here here again uh, i guess 
test giveaway description. Some stuff here. Prizes. One prize one, two prize two. Okay, and that 2021 0520, I guess. So I'm just gonna say that it ends today, meaning that once we write the script that closes it, we won't have to wait for like, you know, three days or something to make it work. Okay, now we need to, um, I guess we're gonna copy stuff from episodes page because this works pretty well. I'm just gonna say, okay, this is gonna take in giveaways property. So we can again, statically generate that uh, using the server side queries, which is uh, very convenient for us. Weekly, okay, and we do need to uh, change the queries though, right? So we need this and this. Okay, we're gonna paste this here. Although this is gonna be, yeah, so the queries are gonna be slightly different. Okay, uh, I also actually found out that the uh, URQL exposes the uh, GQL, um, what do you call it, template literal thingy. I, I always forget how they call it. URQL, what, what do you call them? Template literal, uh, how do you call that thing? This basically, right? So it actually exposes it and you can get properly validated and formatted queries. How do you call, wait a second, template literal. How do you call that template literal? You got the expression interpolation is not what I want. Tag templates, that's what you call it. God damn it, why is it always slipping my mind? Okay, so we are gonna create new queries. So this is gonna be giveaways JS. I don't think we're gonna have that many queries, but uh, at least some of them. Okay, um, all, okay, I guess open giveaways Right, we need, oh yeah, no, we don't need a way to know if QoA is open or not because, no, we do need a way to know if it's open or not, I guess, right? Because we need to know if the script has already closed it or not. So I guess this warrants for ended, which is Boolean and default is false, right? So we should have that as well. Okay, All right. So I guess we can just go here and say, okay, query, open giveaways, just quickly write the query here, giveaways, giveaway. We want uh, pretty much all of those fields, name, description, and that ended, I mean, ended in this case, doesn't matter. And we actually want to filter it, right? So where, uh, no, where uh, en ended is equal false, right? So we want all that are not ended, unexpected variables in what? Oh, right, God damn it! I have some stuff in there, right? There we go, okay, cool. So that actually returns exactly what we want. Uh, whoops, that is very poorly pasted. Okay, so we got our open giveaways query now, which we can use over here. It should auto import it, which means that we can say the data open giveaway. Yep, that looks correct. And that should be renamed to giveaways. Uh, no, we need that. And giveaways data. Ta -da 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 -ta. Okay, then we got our giveaways. And then for now, I'm just gonna do this JSON stringify just to see that it actually returns what we expect basically. Um, close that. And if we reload the page now, we should see the JSON with our. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Fair enough. That is a bit broken. So that should fix it. And it is for whatever reason empty. Why is it empty? Oh because I forgot permissions, that is why. <laughs> of course I forgot permissions. Okay, right, permissions, anonymous allows without any checks, select anything. Yeah, I think we don't care about anonymouses getting all the data of giveaway. So now we should get our one giveaway, perfect. Okay, so let us render it, I guess, right? So we need to say giveaways map, giveaway, uh, yes, that looks correct. Okay, and we're gonna create a giveaway component. It's gonna have a giveaway map to giveaway and uh, key is gonna be giveaway ID, right? So we do that. 
It's obviously gonna fail right now because giveaway component doesn't exist, which is perfectly fine. We are gonna create it now. Give away. Okay. To index.js. Okay. Uh, let me just copy the header, I guess, or something. So. Yes, yes, yes. We don't need all of that actually. That's gonna be a lot simpler. I can actually do export default function. We are gonna go for giveaway and uh, here is gonna be giveaway. Away, okay, if only I could type. All right, so we need to render the giveaway somehow now. Um, I guess it's gonna be flex column. So we are gonna have H1, I guess H2 is better here. This is gonna be giveaway name. It's gonna be like uh, text XL font bold or something. And then we're gonna have our giveaway description, right? So this is actually should be rendered as, oh, what do you call it? This should be rendered as a markdown. Um, okay, we, we should probably do that. Uh, and we should import the giveaway here. That looks good. Okay, well, yeah, that looks almost good. Um, React Markdown. Uh, I obviously cannot type Markdown, so let me just uh, have a quick look here. So, oh yeah, there's an official Remark component now, which is uh, perfect for us. So we're just gonna take that, install it and use it because Remark is pretty damn fast. All right, and it's also very easy to use. So we're just gonna do that. All right, so we are, yes, we got the react markdown there we go and we do this for the description i think we also would need uh, i don't remember if i had it already but the tailwind by default doesn't have any styles for the typography right uh tailwind content uh display contents i think typography there was a plugin yes i mean yeah it is tailwind typography so we are going to install and use it because i basically i don't want to spend time you know writing typography myself uh, and the plugin does a decent job at that so uh, why not just use that um, tailwind css config plugins typography that's actually all we want and that uh, i don't remember do you need any Pros, right? You have to add the class pros. So we say if class name pros, npm run dev, and that should actually result in a okayish render of our giveaways, right? So once it's working, I don't think so. We don't need any plugins. We don't really care about that. It's just some basic giveaway text. We do care. So first of all, we need. We need user to log in right before he can enter those giveaways. So maybe I will hide the giveaways unless the user is logged in. Okay, there we go. Uh, right, now we have the problem with the dark mode. So if I switch to the light mode, it actually works fine. But if it's a dark mode, oh boy, okay. Uh, well, that is that is something I will figure out later. I don't really like how the dark mode is currently imp implemented here because it uses the essentially the theme context and then you have to like manually switch properties which is annoying as hell so we are not going to do that um i'm wondering if i can just remove this so just do it as a div okay yeah you know what that's fine all right so we got that uh let's maybe make it border border black uh round it LG or something. Yeah, okay, some padding. Maybe a bit more. And then, okay, let's make it gray 300 or something and BG gray 300. So does that look? There we go, that looks better, right? And we need a button that will say, so enter giveaway. So we will, we will need to add a bit more logic here, but uh, that's perfectly fine. We can go with that for now. Um, okay. We need some button styling. I don't remember. I don't think we had actually any Tailwind CSS. Is there some button examples here? 
No, there are none. Okay. Tailwind. Tailwind UI was it, right? I think they have some very nice buttons here and I believe some of them are even free. Yeah, so we can, uh, we can, okay, this is the header. We probably should take the header from here later on because it just looks a lot better than what I did. Okay, there we go. There's a publish button that looks very nice. Uh, we can just take that. Um, I don't really care about this SVG inside of it, but uh, I do like the style of the button. Type button, class name, enter giveaway. Okay, cool. So that now should look a bit better. Yes, uh, kinda. Inline flex. Uh, so we got this. So this is a flex column. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's fine. Uh, do we text small, text white? Do we got the text align here somewhere? No, we're not. So we can say, where's the text? Um, <laughs> should probably extract some of that into components because working with these lists of classes is not exactly convenient. Okay, yes. Oh, right. It's a flex. So we actually want justify center. Nope, center here, right? So that should fix it. There we go. Okay, uh, that looks good. Uh, well, good enough for prototype, basically. Okay, so what we want to do is, first of all, we, we, we want to only show the giveaways and button if the user is logged in, right? Which means we have to do this. You said, I guess let's create a hook. So I don't think we have this. Uh, let's create a hooks folder. Let's call it user.js. And uh, it's going to be export const use user, right? So we got this session thing, which we take from client. And I believe that return session user, I think. Um, <laughs> let's, let's just mem memoize it based on the session, basically session user. From session, uh, wait, 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 session, yes, thank you very much. And then we just return the user. So we got this thing, I think that should work. So let me just console log session here. Uh, and then we just use that in our header. So that's what that's the first place, right? So you just say, okay, use user, right? And then there's our user, but uh, what? Oh, I returned the the full user of you know what, let's return it as a object because maybe we want to return some more stuff later on. So basically say if there is a user, then we do that. And then that should probably be optional because if there is no user, it should Yeah, we don't care about falsy values. Right. Okay. So we're not logged in, which means there is no user. This session is probably empty. Yes, it's a null which is great. I guess if there is no user, we actually want to show that sign in button from the index page, right? So this is a perfect place for it. And uh, I guess we just do that. Um, okay. If there's no user, we don't care about not signed in, we just want this button that says login. And if there is user, uh, we don't really care about sign out button for now. So I'm just going to leave it out. Um, Okay, da, 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 da. there's yes button sign in. Uh, sign in comes. Okay, so we can kill it from here. We no longer need it here. We do need that stuff. Sign in comes from here. I think we actually don't need session anymore, which means we can kill all of that from here. All right, so we got this sign in button here. If I save it, there's a sign in button. Looks like absolute S, but that is perfectly fine. So it's gonna be flex and uh, I guess, yeah, you know what? I guess I can just, uh, no, it's fine. We can, we can leave it like this. So I can just add it to the MR4. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on design right now. So we're gonna extend it later. So if we sign in with a GitHub, yep, there is our, what is this prop class name did not match server items. What, where is this coming from? Pages index, huh? What? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Where is this coming from? 
Warning, prop class name did not match. Oh, oh, it means that the class name on the... All oh, right, okay, this is because, again, of the way that I am handling the dark mode, which works not very good, basically not particularly good right now, right? And uh, yeah, but we're, we're good, we're good. So we're working, that is perfectly fine. Okay, so we're going to go to the giveaways now. Perfect. Um, again, we should be able, so here... Wait a second, what is the session now? So I, I want to see the user. Like we don't particularly care about the object itself. Let me just refresh. So session should contain, right, we got this stuff again. Yeah, there we go. So there's a user name, email, image, access token expire. Okay, cool. So we got, yeah, so the user looks exactly as you would expect it to. Which means that here in the giveaway, we also gonna... I mean, I guess we don't really need to fetch user so many times as like for every giveaway. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to fetch it over here. I'm going to say, okay, const user use user, right? We're going to use it from here. And I'm just going to pass it to all the giveaways, right? So we don't care about that anymore. We don't care about that. And then here, if we don't have a user, we're just not going to show the enter giveaway button, right? So basically, if there's no user, but we do have a user, so that works perfectly fine. Okay. So this part works. Uh, this page will work even if I open it on incognito window without authentication, but there's just not going to be any buttons, which is also fine. So what do we need to do now? Now we need to enter the participants. Okay, we also need to create a new role, right? Um, hell, if I remember how that is done. Hasura role. Um, I believe there was the, yeah, role and session variables. There was, did I, wait a second, did we assign the role already to a user? At what's up? Yes, we got this next dose. Oh no, we actually didn't assign anything, right? Um, Hasura next Auth. Hasura had a really good blog post on on the the whole like next Auth setup. So for now, we're not doing anything fancy, but you actually do need to uh, essentially extend it a tiny bit. Yes, so we need the encode and decode, as well as session and JVT. So I guess we could just go and use the take the stuff from the example over here. Okay, uh, so we care. Yeah, so the secret is something we should have actually set here from the very beginning, but it's fine. So I guess there is no point in doing that. Uh, I will need to update it later, but that's fine. Okay, then we got the session. Right, we also need to use the JWT for Hasura, otherwise this won't work. Um, so process and node and equal production. So we, if we are in production, that we're not going to be running a debug. Events, we don't really care about that right now. I don't think we actually care about debugging as well because we don't really care about most of those things. Okay. All right. So the important bit is this. So once we when we generate the JSON web token that is going to be used by the um, Hasura or by the next Auth, we need to put this Hasura JVT claims that say that, okay, this user is allowed role user and the default role is user and the current role is user. And this is the ID, right? Okay, and then we need the JVT thing, which we import from, uh, I believe, yeah, I believe we need to install, I don't know if the JSON web token is installed or not. I don't think it actually is. No, it seems to be, is it installed? You know what, I'm gonna install it just in case, JSON web token. There we go. Okay, npm run dev. So we got that. Uh, probably should. Okay, let me just move off screen and define a secret in my secret local secret just to be very simple. Okay, we got the secrets. Uh, dock it back again. Okay. So do we need to define anything else here? No, not really. Okay, max age, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, instead of using max age, Hasura for whatever reason uses 24 hours, which is fine for us. So a day is perfectly okay. 
and then here uh boolean neutrals now that's i mean yeah you could just do boolean from user right instead of doing the whole tannery there we go or i guess i can just do that <laughs> don't even need that condition over there um okay token id user id okay cool 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 right that looks good so i think um if we start this server in the dev mode right now we should be able so if we we, we would need to re-log in because uh, otherwise our session our current session is not valid because we're not using json web token so theoretically we should be de-authenticated right now yep exactly if we sign in now uh, we should get our json web token right okay uh so it still complains obviously about the server side mismatch with the client side because of the theming okay but now that we have the token and we have the permission so we can create a new role user and uh, we basically say okay user can insert itself into participants so long as the user is equal to hasura user id so basically user can insert himself but not nothing else right and he can insert giveaway and the user okay uh that's it i think so yeah so we can same check we can select anything but only so long as it is our own thing i guess i mean i don't want to like yeah we, we can just use the same check for modification we only allow modifying giveaway and we can use the same check so basically only allow deleting your own entries right anonymous is not allowed to access this table at all right okay so now we need to code that um giveaways entry and for that we're gonna use mutation and we need to write our graphql query right export const enter giveaway so this is gonna be our query gql okay mutation enter give away and then we're gonna have a user and that is gonna be int and we're gonna have uh you know what we don't actually need a user right because we already know the user so theoretically asura uh should be able on presets user from session variable x hasura user id right so we can basically just tell hasura to insert that and then users yeah so you basically user is only allowed to insert the giveaway and then the user id should be inserted for him from the session variable which is perfect because we less things to think about for us right okay so i'm gonna go into the api here and we're gonna create this mutation and we're gonna basically say uh okay enter giveaway so we need to insert giveaway insert giveaway participants no insert giveaway uh please go away giveaway participants one object giveaway dollar giveaway and then basically we just want all the data back right i created it and updated it okay cool so that should literally do exactly what we want basically right so we do this uh, where's our graphql stuff over here so we do this enter giveaway why don't you import this okay from uh graphql i should configure i should configure the relative root of the page because it's a bit of a pain in ass to do this manually now i need my reference for urql because i honestly work with uh what do you call it with apollo most of the time and i don't remember half of the things the urql does okay where is the example with mutations uh run a first query variables pause query where is mutation sending a mutation there we go update to do results update to do okay so you get the result first and then there's a function that enter give away okay enter give away results okay 
So let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay, we need the function that does it actually. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's call it submit. Uh, we don't care about the title, so we don't really have it. What we need is giveaway here, and it's going to be giveaway ID. So we pass the ID to it, right? Enter giveaway, we pass in variables. We don't even need to create a new variable for that. We can just use a sync await. Sync awaits and let me think for a second. So basically we need to hide the button, right? So we need to somehow filter. Out. Oh yeah, I know how we can do that. We can, so we need to change the open giveaways. Okay, you know what? That will, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking basically we need, we need to only show the giveaways user can enter, but have not entered yet, I guess. Or maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe there's an easier way. So basically we can just say, yeah, I think I know it. So you can say the giveaways have relationship to participants, right? And that way, when we query the giveaways, we can say that uh, we want participants and we want users from it, right? And for most of the user, or at least for everyone is basically going to be empty so long as that there is no current user, right? So I guess I'm going to also request ID here. So, okay. And that means if there is user and giveaway participants length is zero, because if it's not zero, it means we can see someone, which means it's us. And that is exactly what we want to have. Click on click. We say enter, or I guess submit is what we want to do. Okay. And I'm just going to console log this thing. Okay. But we also want to, can you ask WorkL to refetch queries? Uh, Re-executing queries, request policy, read more about the API, re-execute query. So the, um, what do you call it? Apollo has a very nice mechanism where you can basically say, okay, so once this mutation is over, please re-execute that other query. I'm wondering if the WorkQL has the same thing because this, like the way of handling it is just really, really helpful in the, aha, okay, right. Uh, giveaway participants. I guess that's right. Why are we getting empty, empty results? What is going on? Where's my network? What is happening? Uh, Ta -ta -ta. Yes, where is my XHR requests? All oh, right, because we're doing it from a server. All oh, right, okay, so it's no longer a user requesting it. Okay, um, that is absolutely fair, which means that we now to do that correctly, we actually have to get user authentication, right? Because so right now what happens is we, we get, we pre-render the page from the server side, right? And because the server side uses the public client that doesn't have any authentication, it returns empty result set for the participants, which is perfectly sensible, right? So what we need to do is we need to say, uh, okay, so first of all, we need the, um, what do you call it? Da -da 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 -da, REST API, no client API. Um, where did it? Oh, back to me. Oh, come on. Are you... Uh... I know that it exists. Yes, there we go. Get session is what we want. Session, get session, server side example. And we need to pass the request, which I believe is, okay, get session from that context. I honestly don't remember if the console log let me just log the context because I don't remember if that has request or response. So we got, I think, yeah, okay, res, and I guess it has the rec, right? So context, I guess we can just pass the context itself. I think that basically what it expects, right? Okay, uh, console log session. 
So if we reload that page, we should see the session. No. Uh, yeah, okay, there's our session, there's our token, which means that we can say, okay, session token is what we want. Question, how do we pass it? Can I say like headers or so? Uh, that is definitely not correct. So, okay, session token uh, is what we want to pass to GraphQL clients. Here's the client. Uh, do we need to create a new server side client? Mm, maybe we do. Maybe we need like clients create GraphQL client with token. And then we give it token and we return create client. And here, yeah, probably this is how it wants it, right? Fetch up. Okay. Let's go have a look at the URKL docs and see how exactly you pass it. Setting up the clients. Uh, yes, fetch options. So this is what we want to pass. And uh, fetch options. Okay, so we can just uh, slim it down to this basically, right? Headers authorization. There, yeah, 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 this looks this looks fine, right? Okay, so we can instead of just using the client, we get the function. We say that the GraphQL client is session token. And I guess we should option chain that in case there is no session, which then would use the uh, no authorization header client anyway, and it's going to be public, right? And I think that should actually now provide us with the correct stuff question mark uh what is field participants not fun? oh okay so this is right so field participants how do we hmm. so participants are not allowed to be queried by the guess i guess we could allow querying them and say user equals hasura user id but because there is no user id it's just gonna fail all right i mean it's, it's always going to return empty result set right so i think that should work now okay no what's uh hasura user id miss yeah okay so it basically doesn't have the variable which is not going to work for us i'm going to delete this permission Oh boy, how do we do this? Uh, so I guess we need to, I guess we need two queries. So we gotta have the open giveaways query, which doesn't have participants. It's gonna have some branching logic over here. And we're gonna have open giveaways, open, I guess user giveaways is what, what we're gonna have here. And then here on the page, we're gonna say, okay, if there is session, token we're gonna say okay we're gonna use this one and if there's no token uh please import it from the same file thank you very much okay so now it should basically load it correctly right i think no uh participants not found okay but i'm not what console log session what are we missing here? Am I, am I providing the wrong header to the Asura? Wait a second. Asura auth header. Maybe I am providing the wrong header because I might, I might be, I might be forgetting how things work. Right, come on now. Just, just God damn it! Stop jumping. Um, right. Da, 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 da. Authorization bearer. JVT must contain, okay, authorization bearer JVT. Yes, this is exactly what we are doing right now, right? Headers, authorization, bearer, there's our token. Okay, that looks correct. So this is exactly what we're doing here. So why are you, can, do I need to restart it? Does it need to recompile the static side of the page? Is that what's happening? But what is, what is, nope, still, so there is, is there, where's our, there's our session. So we got the token, right? That is, that seems correct. Participants not found in type giveaway. Okay, giveaway. We do have our relationship set up, right? Participants, yes. Participants, permissions. And user is allowed to select that. 
That also looks correct. Okay. Um, hmm. I am slightly confused as to why this happens. So let me just uh, let me just log the okay, so we got this we got the session console log This is the query that we're going to be using. Let's just make sure the query is correct So documents, okay, so it's going to be using the one that has participant. Yeah, because we are logged in we are sending the token Which makes perfect sense. Okay, let me just you know what? Let me just re -log in. Maybe there's something wrong with my current token We reload that so I should not be logged in anymore Okay, so if we are not logged in, it correctly fetches everything that is required, basically, right? So I log in, I should get the JVT, I should go to giveaways, and uh, we still get the error. Okay, so basically the problem here is the client. I am not importing the client anymore, right? Okay, cool. Yes, we still need token authorization. Does it need to be capitalized? Is that what's happening? Do you need like a capital A? If that's the case, it's going to be very amusing. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> Thank God it's not that stupid. Um, right. So why are you... Is my token broken or something? Wait a second. So where's my... Here's my token. Let's try using it manually through Hasura, Hasura UI. We can go here. We can say, okay, participants. And there's our headers. And we can say authorization there. And here is our token, right? So that theoretically... Validation fail. Field participants not found on giveaways giveaway. Okay, so there is something off with our permissions. Which is a bit weird. So we got permissions. Yes. So, oh, yeah. Ah, I'm an idiot. I forgot to allow user to select. Ah, was it that easy? No, it wasn't. Uh, participant not found on giveaway giveaway. Okay, so that's now we allow user to select this as well, which shouldn't be a problem actually. Relationship. Okay, so participants. Remote relationship. Okay, so this now links to participants, right? Permissions. Anonymous is not allowed to query it. Column select and row select is user equal Hasra user ID. That looks correct, I think. Are we doing the user thing? Yes, there is a user. Okay. Why are you not working? So theoretically, that should allow me to select all of the nested expression. Can I, can I go to API and can I just say giveaways? Oh, oh, it doesn't even allow me to select participants here. Interesting. Why? Okay, so there's definitely something off with the permissions. Hey, Storm, welcome to the stream. Okay, so what is user equals? Wait a second. Is that the correct check? Let me just do without any checks. And then I'm just going to say, okay, custom check. Equal user, yes. Yeah, so that seems correct, right? Save. Why am I not able to access giveaways participant? Why is it not? Wait a sec. What? Participants, yes. Permissions, user. Should be able to select that. Allow user to make aggregation queries. No, we are not going to allow that. That seems like it should work, right? What is happening? So we have exactly the same permissions here. How's the next JS framework with forms? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, so the next is, is basically more of a question, how is React with forms, right? So there's plenty of libraries that make forms pretty easy with them. Uh, so there should not be too many problems when working with forms in Next.js or really any other React framework. Okay, X user ID token ID. Wait a second, do we even have an ID question? Can it be that I just don't have an ID here? Um, is that the problem? Because I remember having similar-ish issues with the uh, work app that I'm currently like doing as my primary work. Okay, so yeah, this is the, yeah, so we don't have an ID there. So what is sub? 
tokens. Okay, you know what? Let's just log in and see how does this token looks. I know that you're gonna complain there. There is ID. Yeah, okay. No, there is ID. Okay. Okay, there is ID. That looks correct. Um, I am very confused right now. So this is our token that looks absolutely correct. Spires roles look fine. Default role look fine. House role role looks perfectly fine. I've been using Express.js for front-end and Fastify for... How do you use Express.js for front-end? Like Fastify and Express is basically similar to the extent where Fastify is just a more modern version of uh, Express. How do you... You mean like templating or something? Is that what you're talking about? User ID equals house user ID. Yeah, so that should be... What am I missing? What is going on? Row select, yes, has for user ID, okay. Why are we, I take that token and I go to JVT. Am I just generating a broken token or something? Okay, so there is actually no ID here. Uh, question, was my token broken or something? So if I reload the page, should get the new token over here, right? Ta, 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 that is token. Uh, we need it from session. Okay, so this seems fine, I guess, right? Decode, verify, secret, yes, that is fine. That is okay. Session ID, token, encoded token. Okay, let's see. It's console log. So that's our session. Do we get the correct value over here? ID undefined. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. There's our problem. Okay, so the problem is we cannot restore the ID from here for some reason. Token. Question is why? So we should get the decoded token there, right? Yes, which me uh there's no ID again. Where did the ID go? Oh, is it just get removed because of that? Because we don't actually set token. So we set this sub thing, whatever the hell that is. I don't even know if we need that. But I'll just, if I do that, is that all we need to do? Is like, is this the problem? It just overrides the ID and that's it. Express.js with EGS for front end. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Sure, the basic templating. It depends, like if you don't really need more complex forms, then it shouldn't really matter that much. Uh. But React has a ton of libraries that make working with forms a lot easier, basically. Okay, we still do not see giveaways. Question is why? Okay, so the JSON token now contains the ID. There we go. Okay, so ID is now here, which is good. So we got the user roles. Okay, default user role. Do I need to restart it or something? What is going on? So permissions, right, user. We got the role user, right? Yes, we got the role user. X Hasura role. X Hasura default role allowed roles. Yes, that seems fine. Fastify is awesome to work with. Absolutely, it's basically more modern Express.js and there are so many quality of life things in it that is just a joy to work with. Authorization bearer JVT. Okay, this spec. Uh, default role field indicating the default role if uh, used in. Okay, so we don't actually need default role because we passed the role. Allowed roles, list of roles allowed. Default role should be specified in a member of list. Okay. Must contain the following. Okay, so it must contain. Okay, so this seems fine. Sub, name, admin, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. That looks fine. And oh, wait a second, didn't I need to write? I, ah, oh, man, I completely forgot. You actually need to configure right. I'm an idiot. I've been trying to do all of that. We are actually, we have to configure the Hasura to use the JVT tokens. God damn it, I'm an idiot. I completely forgot about that. Oh boy, okay, so you need to tell Hasura to actually... Uh, 
Right. Oh my god. I how could I forget about this? Of course. Um configuring JVT modes. Right. Hasura, GraphQL, JVT secret is what we need to pass it. And um ta -da 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 -da, let me think. So I used this local secret thing. And then I think it takes in the JSON basically, but I honestly don't remember the format, so I'm just gonna Google that. Or maybe they mentioned this here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that is a public key. There you go. I think this is what we, is it? I think we use the, not RS, I think we use the HS 256, right? So I think this is exactly what we want. Okay. Right, I just completely forgot that you have to enable this mode in Hasro as well. God damn it, I'm an idiot. Okay. Now this should make it work. Okay, um, docker compose stop, docker compose remove, docker compose up minus D. Uh, hey Ben, Hasura is all in one backend that basically exposes a very nice console that allows you to work with, um, fail to connect with uh, Postgres and it just creates a, what do you call it, GraphQL API for you. Docker logs, Hasura, GraphQL engine one. Hasura secret invited at least 32 characters. Okay, um, let's make it very long local secret, one, two, three, four. How long is that? That is, I don't see how long is that, but uh, that is, where is my length? God damn it. That long enough. Okay, DC or M minus F, DC up minus D, Docker PS minus M. Never heard of it. I mean, it's a fantastic little, or I mean, it's not, not exactly little, but it's a fantastic uh, tool that basically saves a lot of time instead of, you know, building the API on your own. You can just very nicely edit the stuff through UI and then it just makes everything work for you. Um, if you give me a second, I'll make a correct key here. Okay, that looks good enough. Let me just paste it into my secrets. So that's, okay. Ta -da 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 -ta. Let me dock this here. So I need to put it into the example. All right. Okay, uh, so we start our console. I think now it should start working, right? So there's our console. Right, so this is the Hasura console essentially, and I just created a bunch of tables. So this is my Postgres. It has like permission management and everything. So we're now allowing uh, the user to only query his own uh, entries, for example. And now we should be able to, okay, right. The JVT is now wrong, which is perfectly correct. Uh, which means that here we need to, 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 so we actually don't care about the other so we need to see the token. I guess we don't care about that as well. We can just see the token here, right? So console log session here. I guess we will need to re-log in because our current token is in that. Uh, okay, it says it's valid, but it's actually not true. So let me just kill everything. So console, right, sign in, sign in. Okay, and there is our token. So I think that's the one, right? Yes, this is the one. So we put the bearer here. Uh, invalid, sig oh, right, I, got, I need to restart the front end as well because it didn't pick up the new key. Got ah, things, things I forget. Okay, uh, we need to re-log in again because the token is broken which makes perfect sense. So log in, reloads. It's gonna say, okay, we're not logged in. We're gonna sign in. We're gonna log in here. Now we're gonna get the new token, which works perfect. And if we paste that token here, we should see the participants, right? Perfect. Giveaway and then participants. And then ID, this basically will give us empty because we are not currently owning any of the participants. Perfect. So this now should start working and it seems to be working indeed. Okay, uh, which means that this is now works. 
That took way longer than it should have. I mean, I should have remembered that I need to enable the JVT mode in Hasura. Okay, cool. So this is good. Uh, now we are here. So we got the participants. We got the, if there is no participant, we show the giveaway button. Okay, and then we enter it. Right, so let's see what happens when I click enter. And data, okay, fetching false. So we should, if I go to the network tab, there's our error. Okay, so we got no mutation exist. Okay. Use mutation enter giveaway. What do you mean no mutation exists? Am I, so theoretically, is this, yes, it does. I am allowed to do that. Uh, thank you for your subscription, X Storm. Highly appreciate it. So that seems like it should work, right? So why are what what is this error message? Uh, error extension. So validation failed. No mutations exist. The hell does this mean? No, oh, this is a server response, right? So variables one. Okay. So uh, can I just say okay? Uh, give away. What, what is the ID for our giveaway? Is it one? Yes, it is one. If I run that, this works. So we did insert it perfectly fine, right? Participant, yeah, so this one works. So for some reason, it doesn't really work from here, which I'm guessing for some reason I am used the wrong, but it also doesn't show the error here for whatever reason. Am I using the... Oh, God damn it. <laughs> no, wait a second. You just pass in the variables, right? So wait a second. Um, or QL is what I want. I probably, I don't know. Should I just switch to the Apollo GraphQL because I'm just more used to that? But no, you know what? We're fine. We're going to figure it out. It's not that hard. So sending a mutation. There we go. Uh, there's our to do. So we got the tie. Yeah, so we got those variables with results. Yes. And then, okay, so it actually returns results. Results. Okay, results. Yes. And then you pass in variables, which is exactly the very, yeah, so we do that. Okay, yes. The second parameter. So that looks correct. I guess let's try that. Reload this, yes, there's our enter button. Error, combined error, no mutations exist. But what, am I, what, what? But you just allowed me to, okay, mutation, enter giveaway. Oh, right, I'm an idiot because my client is, uh, okay, so we have to manually, okay, that is true. Okay, so the client I create now is anonymous. Uh, so we need to use, Right, so this should actually on user use user. Ta, 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 ta. So we need to do this use user thing from okay component. Uh, what? So we need to manually basically components. Why are you? What is up with my? Oh, god damn it! Because it's it's import, not const. Uh, hooks, and that should be user JS. Okay, so okay, const GraphQL clients. We're gonna memoize it based on the user, so it should be only created once per user. And then we, I guess we just return. So we're going to use this thing. Right, we don't actually care about the user in this case, we're going to say const token, right, is going to be use memo session token, and it's going to be depending on session. Okay, so we're going to return the token. Uh, whoops, that's session. Right, so this actually cares about the token, not session, and we're just gonna do that, right? On token, yes. So now we should get the GraphQL client that uh, correctly has the token in there, right? There we go. And combined error, malformed authorization error. Okay, <laughs> perhaps not. Uh, let's check this out, console log. What is my session variable? Am I forgetting what's in there? 
just reload that um do we get user expires token no there is a token there okay token yes that looks correct okay um <laughs> bearer token that looks fine let me just uh, log so that i know that it basically creates console log create new client token right so let's just see that it actually creates it with a correct token no it is undefined why is it undefined because app is probably i know why it is undefined okay so the app is actually rendered uh this is the server so basically rendered on server which means we don't have access to the client token which means there's two ways of handling this so one we could either move the client creation to the client side which doesn't make much sense because we have the session or we could um change did it create next app no 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 that's all what i want custom app there we go we could just yeah there's the get initial props right uh yes this is what we want okay so we actually want to say app get initial props and i guess let's do it this way so export it after we define those props there's the app context right and what we are going to do in this case we're going to say that in addition to so we don't use the user here but rather we're going to say gonna pass the token through the properties and what we're going to do is we're going to say okay so session uh get session is what we want to do right app context i believe that should work and then token is going to be session token so this way it should get the token on the server side uh not quite maximum call stack exceeded what what get initial props why is it exceeded what is going on calls get initial props and fills page app oh oh wait a second is it because of the naming why is it oh right because app should be the right okay so that should be my app my app or i guess we can call it custom app or something that should be imported from next app okay so that that's how it uh, whoops that's how it should work okay create new client undefined but that is expected because that it, we, it was called on the server side perfect there are there is our uh, there's our token that seems correct um da -da 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 -da. we don't need that anymore we can actually roll all of that back okay uh i think now if we send it it should work correctly right no combined error malformed authentication error uh interesting so it does wait a second so it does create it twice it creates it once on the server side with the correct token and then creates it another one with undefined eh? um okay console log session why is it twice and why is one time there is a token and the other time there is no token oh is it wait a second is it a sync is that what what's wrong yeah it's a sync okay so now it should proper yes there we go okay so what the problem was the session getting is actually a did i use a sync in the previous one yes i did okay so i just forgot that it's a sync all right so we got that we got the session we created the clients this is uh i should remove all of that so we no longer need to debug anything perfect okay we got the queries we don't need that all right so and now here reload the page okay enter giveaway cool so it actually inserted this stuff and now we need to how the hell do you so again as i said you know the um apollo has a very handy method where it basically refetches queries for you 
I guess we could pass on the refetch method from the top level. So we say, okay, here's our giveaways. Right, but we have to execute this here then, right? Because otherwise it would, this won't actually work. Okay, use query. So this has to be done on the client side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what, we can actually do that. So we can actually run this here. And say, okay, so this is uh, use query returns, this is result, and this is re execute query, right? So we can run this basically whenever there is. So you can say, Paul, um, what was it? So where is the use query thing? Pausing use query, exactly. This is what we want. So we basically use query. Okay, so there's an object. I keep forgetting how those things work. Okay, so there's our use query, there's our query. We don't have any variables and we pause it. We only run this on the client side if there is a user, right? So we only run it if we have authorization, this will fetch the user giveaways. And then on the server side, we don't actually care. So we can actually just get the, um, da -da 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 -da, we don't care about that. We can get the GraphQL client, which is the public one, right? And we don't care about the session anymore. Okay, and those are gonna be our public giveaways, right? So let's rename this to public giveaways. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, um, const, Okay, we're gonna render public giveaways. If there is no results, uh, data, right? I guess let's just extract it from there. Const user giveaways. Okay, memo this, it's gonna be results, data, and this is gonna be giveaways, yes. From result, okay. So if there is no user giveaways, we're gonna render that. And uh, we actually don't need to provide the user here. And if there are user giveaways, we are just uh, gonna render them, right? Okay, and then if there is result um, fetching. Yeah, what is going on there? Just making some really weird sound loading. Okay, cool. So this should basically now, uh, error, giveaways. okay, reload that to make sure. Cool, so this is now fetching them. So this is public, I guess this renders the public ones, right? Oh boy, okay, so let me just uh, console log result i guess user giveaways result and public giveaways the user giveaways result and public give okay so the user and public seems to be both exist all right it doesn't show the enter button because we already entered so i need to kill this here so we reload that there we go so this now works as expected there's our user giveaways there's our public giveaways it loads, renders exactly what we expect. And there's, we now have this re-execute query, which means that we can say re-execute. We can pass this re-execute query thing over here. And we can just say that once you're done with that, just uh, re-execute the top query, right? We don't actually care about the uh, result here. And we don't really care about the result here either, so long as it's not an error, but that's a different question. Okay, da, 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 da. we don't need this anymore, which means that if we reload that, and if I click the enter now, it should refetch the query and the enter button should no longer be there, right? Um, yeah, kinda, no. Okay, this is insert. Okay, maybe I'm not doing the refetching correct. Re execute query, re execute, refetch policy, network only. Okay, I guess maybe this is what we wanna do. 
execute refetch okay re execute query yes re execute this seems correct okay maybe like that so let me just uh, clear the data again are we good now okay and it works perfect so we are now um should probably do that and say div okay you are in ta -ta 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 -ta. let me think class name on bold text excel adding two or something and i forgot to close it uh right more than zero yes and why is it text black i guess there we go i mean not the best design but whatever you know that's fine all right so we got that now let's create some prizes so now basically we got the giveaways render we got the giveaways entry and what we need to do is well, first of all let's add some prizes here and say okay prize one description test prize one giveaway one owner is gonna be null uh why is owner not nullable did i i didn't make it nullable for whatever reason let's make it nullable so owner is now nullable okay which means uh prize one prize one description giveaway one owner is none okay yes no that's fine Okay, cool. So we got the prize. It belongs to giveaway one, but there is no owner for it. Uh, what we will say is that anyone can query for prizes, any logged in user, so long as he is the owner of the prize, right? So basically, once our script finishes the checks and says, okay, hey, this guy actually won, he's able to just query it and get the results immediately right okay uh now we need now we actually need to run this the checks to close the giveaways which i think cron trigger would probably be the best way to do that right um so i guess close i guess pick pick let's call it pick pick giveaway winners okay so we need a web hook um i believe hasura web hook and mars hasura does allow using environmental variables at least in their actions so i assume it's the same for web hooks uh ta, 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 that is smtp send grid post yeah okay so um <laughs> how do i create an event trigger yes trigger name public a webhook url this page docker networking that is not what i want ta, 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 ta webhook headers um i am like 90 percent sure so in the actions they actually mentioned that somewhere action description defining da, 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 custom types that's not it where did they mention this custom action action handlers i uh, probably here i assume it works in the same way like uh cle no, that's not it. Header. Didn't they? Okay. I am pretty sure. Metadata API. Server config. I remember reading it somewhere in their docs, basically, that you can pass. I mean, I could go into my work machine, right? Like work project right now and just have a look. But it's got to be somewhere in the docs, right? I read it somewhere. <laughs> um. Why the hell is it so hard to find it? Metadata PG create trigger. That's not it. 
action handler um, uh, right do i really need to go into my work project to find it using environmental variables in event trigger yes there you go this is where it was was it a, this is not hasser official thing but it was local to stay was it in their articles i honestly don't remember uh how's we creating it from server so this is the migrations that's not it yes action base url this is exactly what i use in the, my production project basically but okay so this is how you do it why is it not in the docs i don't know but that is perfectly fine okay action base url api let's call it pick winners and we are gonna go into the pages api I'm going to create a new file, pick winners.js. Cron schedule, yes, build a cron expression. So at uh, every day, basically, right? Any value, minutes. So we say we basically run it um, every day at 12. Yeah, that seems about right. But let's for now make it every minute at zero, right? So that's basically gonna run it every minute so we can frequently use crons every minute, every 10 minutes. That is very handy actually. Okay, let's let's make it every minute. And then payloads, we don't actually need any payload, right? So we just basically need to trigger a script that would go through giveaways. And if their date of ending is now, we will just pick the winners and assign them and that's it. Okay. Uh, right, uh, there is our, uh, it literally doesn't matter, I guess, question mark. I guess we need some sort of a mechanism to prevent it from, um, from people abusing it. I don't know if that's too much of a trouble because like running a couple of queries shouldn't be too hard. Uh, close this, we don't need that anymore. We don't need that. Okay, let's first write this thing and see. We actually don't don't even yeah, so we can actually create the cron every midnight. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay. Create this uh JSON. Okay, payloads just empty, right? So, so request payload 10, yes. Trigger failed. Why is it failed? Trigger winners valuable. Oh, okay, you have to first create that n variables sure we can do that so we can say action base url oh you know what we need to do now okay now that is something i will um look in my work project because i where did you move it now just detach it please what are you doing Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna do that. So I'm gonna go and look in my work project because uh, this is the Docker networking thing. And I honestly uh, don't remember uh, how I did it. And I it is gonna take too long to Google that essentially. So yes, what you wanna do is you wanna say that you have extra hosts that has host docker internal is the host gateway so essentially the our gateway our external machine will be aliased as host docker internal and then in action base url we can just say that our action base is host docker internal 3000 which will link to our next.js app i think that's actually all we need to do yes yeah so i think that's it uh, it took me a few hours to actually Google for the, like find how to properly set this up because Docker networking is always pretty annoying thing. Let's call it this way. Okay, next JS. I've opened this thing already. Um, API routes is what we want. Uh, introduction. That's what we want, right? Okay. Let's just send done through. Okay, uh, a sync function. So we're going to be a sync here. Okay, and what is going to happen essentially is we need to just run a bunch of queries, right? So uh, let me think. I'm thinking that we need another client. We need create GraphQL client, create GraphQL 
let's call it admin token. And here, instead of that, it's just gonna be, uh, what is the Hasura, Hasura, X Hasura admin secret is what we need to provide, right? Admin secret, yes. So we just put a header, X Hasura admin secret, and then there's the secret, it's, uh, whoops. Let's call it with admin secret. Okay, so we create another client and it's not, guess maybe there's an easier way of doing it, but whatever, for now it's perfectly fine. We can do that. Okay, import from, so this is gonna be components, GraphQL clients.js, right? So we do that, we say, okay, const, admin clients create graphql client with admin secrets so here's process env uh, i did have um uh, did i have it no i didn't have it here right so i need to actually put it in here because we have its admin secret over here so it has to be in the env as well so the um the next js should be aware of that let me also do that off screen for my main file. Okay, so we got the admin secret here, process and Azure secret, so we do that. Okay, and then we need to, first of all, we, uh, let me just dock this back. First of all, we need to find await admin client query I think, can I use the same? No, it's okay. So it wants the basically all giveaways. Let's call it, I, I like to prefix my queries with like server in front of them so that you, you know, you can basically figure out which queries go where. Because in terms of like tree shaking, this is gonna be um, split anyway later on, right? So, okay, so we want, we can actually, you know what? We can actually do it in one query. We don't even need like three or four queries here, right? Uh, okay, let me just, yeah, we can add the cron later. That's fine, it's just trigger for the giveaway. So there's our admin client. And what we want is query. So we say giveaways, giveaway, we get all of them. But we, first of all, we need to actually link giveaway to participants. No, we already linked it. We need to link it to prize correctly. Yeah. So prizes, basically, since we're using admin clients, we are literally allowed to get everything, which is perfect for us, right? So we get the participant ID user is what we want. And we get the price ID owner. Okay, so if we run it as, uh, whoops, remove the variable. If we run it as an admin, that will work perfectly fine. Okay. And uh, yeah, I guess we also want to filter it so we don't care about the giveaways that were already closed. So we're only gonna get the ones that are not closed. Okay, we don't need that anymore. We do need this. Uh, yes, please import that. Okay. Um, did I, right, I need to change this a bit. Where is our query execution in the pages? Because there was like to promise or something, right? So there's our weekly episode. Okay, so this is gonna have properties here to promise. Okay. Da, 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 da. Episodes, query, yep, await data error. So we get the data error. All right. If error, we just rethrow it basically. That is perfectly fine. And then const giveaways open give it. Oh no, there is raid happening. What is going on? 18 people, holy, okay. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so we get the open giveaways from the data, which should be a giveaways giveaway. And then all we have to do is we have to go through them 
we have to close them and we have to update. Let me think for a second. So we got the prizes and we got the people. We gotta take, okay. <laughs> Let's just take it one step at a time, shall we? So we got the giveaways, which means that then we have to go uh, for, Let's make it for now in one loop const giveaway of open giveaways, right? We go through the giveaways, we say, okay, this one is is uh, here now, giveaway. What we are interested in, we are getting the, where is my schema? There's my schema. So we get the prizes and we get the participants, right? Is that correct? Yes, that seems correct. And we also want the ID to actually close it. I hate to be that guy. Yes, I mean, everyone hates to be that guy, but <laughs> Uh, I am working on uh, adding giveaways to the BXJS weekly website. So I've been, I had more and more uh, people reach out to me saying, hey, we got this thing. Do you mind giving it away on your Twitch or YouTube channel? And before that, I used to do it by hand because it was like once every half a year or something. So it doesn't matter. But now it's been like escalating quickly. So I'm building a platform where people can just log in, press a button, and then it will pick the winners and decide who gets what automatically. So I don't have to do it manually, basically. That's 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 about it. Okay, anyway, uh, coming back to this. So we get the ID for the giveaway, we get the prizes, we get the participants. And now here comes the heavy thinking. So we gotta find, so okay. Const winners number. So we say, okay, prizes, so length of prizes is length, correct? Yes, so this is how many winners we can have, right? Which means that now we need to, um, we need a function that will decide winner. Okay, uh, per, I guess let's make it like this, participants and then what we need to do is we need to say, okay, const max is going to be participants length and const random is going to be math random out of max and then we math floor this i think that's how you pick it right <laughs> am i doing this correctly it's always i always screw up my math in the code is like never works correctly okay so let's see Const participants, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Okay, let's see. Math floor participants length multiplied by math random. I think that should, yeah, so one, zero, two, that looks about right. Okay, cool. So I didn't screw anything up this time around. So it's surprising to be honest. Um, oh yeah, now we need to say winner is participants. I guess we don't actually need anything else here. Um, we actually want, okay, MDN array. Which one modifies the array? Is it splice or slice? I always forget that. I think it's splice, right? So inserts an index. I need to remove the index. Start delete count. Uh, yes, splice modifies it. Okay, so that is a lot of subscriptions. Thank you very much. That is insane. Uh, okay, so we say, okay, const win. Uh, no, no, that's not it. So we need the winner is going to be participants from random. So this is our winner. And then we're going to say const new participants. Participants. I also cannot type apparently. We need to splice random, or I guess let's call it winner index to be more descriptive, right? Uh, we need to splice that. And how do I do this? So we need to splice, I think start and delete count is one is what I want to do, right? So we want to do this and then return winner and new participants. Okay. So we got the winner's number, which means that we need to iterate for let's win. I guess we can use I here. Why not? 
i is lower than winner's number i plus plus okay uh so we decide decide winner from participants uh but yeah but we cannot actually do that right so we can we need to say all participant uh participants am i typing correctly <laughs> okay so this is our this is our new array of participants and we're going to use that and i'm just going to override it basically it's a bit finicky but i don't know if there's a better way of doing that okay this is one uh thank you very much uh thanks again for all the crazy subscriptions <laughs> thanks for dropping by all right uh so we got this we got the winner we got the new participants which means that we say all participants equals new participants so we basically remove that one do i even want to do that maybe i don't even want to do that maybe i don't need to mutate anything maybe i just do that just take a winner and then old winner old winners right and i just say okay if uh what i can do is i can just say while Uh, how do I do? I guess do while would be the best, right? So do while old winners find so that vid equals winner id. Okay. So basically, what we want to do is we want to, yeah, so this should be winner. I guess I can just uh yeah no that's that's fine return winner yes so basically what we want to do is we want to find a winner if it's in old winners then we continue no nah, no wait so basically if 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 it's found in old winners we need to do it again right so while this is yes so while this is true Okay, I think that's correct. God, ah, oh, we need some tests here. And then we don't even need to, we don't even need to, so we need to define winners array, right? And then we just say winners push winner participants and then winners. Okay, so that should be it. Console log good thing is since this is for now manually triggered we can just test it thoroughly to make sure that it actually works correctly um right okay because we are going through giveaways okay so that i think that should do it theoretically we should be able to just uh, let me stop the house console we can just do http post Okay, localhost 3000 API um, pick winners, right? Internal server error. Um, oh, right, I have to restart my server because it needs to pick up the new variable from the environment, which makes perfect sense. Okay, so now we should be able to do that and done true and we got this one winner. Okay, so let's let's make it a bit more tricky let's make another giveaway so we already created one let's insert another one giveaway two test two and add 2021 20 and it falls that is perfectly fine okay i need to create some new users here let me just insert test user one test email com I don't really care about the other data here. And then we're going to test user two. Okay, so we got two more users with ID four and five. Uh, right, we need to create some prizes. So let's create test prize one. Um, let me just see. So I think I want to have uh, what is going on? What do you mean refuse to connect? Oh, no, it is started. Oh, right. I, I closed it. and I was like, why doesn't it work? I keep forgetting that it's a kind of progressive web app, so it works even if you stop it, if you have it in, in memory, basically. Okay, so we got a second giveaway. Um, 
description description one okay so we got that test price two so we got two prizes and then we are going to insert three participants for giveaway number two and our participants are going to be three four and five okay three four and five okay Cool. Um, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, does the order of participants in the list get shuffled too to provide more randomness or does it stay the same? Do you think math random is good enough? I mean, order of participants remains whatever the server returns. I think this basically default Postgres sorting, which I think is pretty deterministic. Uh, math random is good enough. Like we're not doing a lottery. We're not shuffling like, you know, millions of dollars here or something. So, so you know, for a Conference tickets, I think that's okay. Like it's not perfect, but hey. Okay. Um, so it seems like it does. Yeah, it does seems to be work. Why is it always user three? Does it always select the same users? No, it doesn't. Okay, so since the data set is so tiny, user four or five. Yeah, that seems to be working fine, right? Why is it always the same user? Oh, because I'm like, why is it always the same user for first giveaway? Because there's no other participants in there. Um, let's add another participant to the first giveaway to make sure that works correctly. One user four. There we go. Uh, so now it should start changing a bit, right? There we go. Okay, cool. So that works as expected. Um, so we got the winners, we decide them. What we need to do now is we need to take the winners, go through them, update the price owners, and then update the giveaway, the close the giveaway, right? Uh, for that, we need to run. Okay, so first of all, this is our da, 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 da. So determine winners. Then we're gonna say um, assign prizes to winners or const prize of prizes. Okay, console log prize. Let me just log that and uh, see. So th this is basically just IDs, right? Yeah. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to say awaits clients. What is our admin client, right? Mutation. Okay, so we need new query, which will update server giveaway okay server update prize okay and here that's got to be a mutation so let's go into our um let's go into our console and uh construct this with a nice assistive technologies from this thing so update price and then it's gonna be prize it's an integer and then we're gonna have a user which is also an integer I'm gonna say update price by PK. Yes, uh, PK columns is gonna be ID price. And then we're gonna say set owner to user. And uh, we are gonna have this basically, right? So that should do it. It's a very straightforward query, nothing super fancy here. Just find the price column by ID and set a new owner. Okay, uh, which means that here mutation is that uh, it is the same file. Why don't you pick it up already? Okay, and then here very um, okay, I need WorkQL. So we don't need that anymore. I do need WorkQL docs because I haven't actually used mutation from the basic client just yet. Core usage. Uh, GQL, yes, yes, yes. Where is mutation? One of queries and mutations. There we go. Query, where is mutation? Oh, okay. So you just provide an array of variables there. Okay, got it. So we just say, what were our variables? Prize and user. So prize is our prize ID. User is winners yeah so basically we actually want to do i equals zero so we want to use the indices here as well right prizes length i plus plus because the size of the winners and size of the prizes is exactly the same prizes uh from i and then 
winner is winners from i okay winner id okay so that will update the price and then once we updated all the prizes we need to update the i guess close let's call it close giveaway so we actually only care about the giveaway integer here and i'm just going to copy that and go edit this in the graph iql again because it's just simpler so what we actually want to do updates uh, come on now giveaways giveaway by pk and pk columns id is give away come on now okay and then we need to set uh ended to true that's literally all we want to do uh, what is happening here there we go and then our id ended so we just need that i think that should do it okay so it just sets it to end it right you know what i haven't done yet so i haven't done any checks for the date so right now it just says it literally picks all the giveaways right <laughs> so picks all the giveaways that are not ended which means that it will take the ones that are uh like can end in 10 days or something so we have to modify this query a bit but that's fine for now that's perfectly okay okay so it's yes there's the id which means that server okay what was the close giveaway and we need to say that the giveaway is id there we go okay right okay cool so to uh, assign prizes complete the giveaway okay uh it is like for now it's very blocking basically because every time it goes through one giveaway it waits until the query is finished but i guess maybe that's fine because we don't really want to hammer our service and you know closing giveaways is not exactly the most important thing to do so it's probably fine uh let me think for a second right so we need to change this query to say that we actually want all giveaways that are not ended where okay so we need to say where uh let me copy this where ends so it's going to be compound query and uh we're going to say ends at lower the uh yes lower than i just say now is that a thing no name expected um I guess, yeah, okay. You know what? We just do that, right? So we can just say dollar date. Wait a second. Can I, I? I know that there is Graph IQL offers the. Da, 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 where is it? Where? And. Okay, it doesn't actually show you the assistive thing. Oh, wait a second. Can I. Let me just kill that. Where? And that's lower than date. Yes. Okay. So it says date, but it doesn't actually put it in here. Okay. That's unfortunate. That's fine. We can do it manually. That is not a big deal. Um, what are you not happy about? Is there date is not defined what do you mean date is not defined what is this oh dates we do not want any default values okay so i guess something like that right and then we need to provide this date thing which is here date is gonna be so the date format is year month day right so oh okay let's see now uh today new date um okay no wait today get full year i think this is how you get i always forget the proper functions for the date war or like working with dates yeah 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 um new okay today new date 
get full year. So that should be, yep, okay, 2021. So then we get today, today gets month. Okay, so that is not very good. Uh, can I, wait, wait a second. Can I, isn't there like a proper format for that to GMT string? Which one of them? No, that's not it. To date string, right? No, that's, well, that's gonna be close enough, but not quite. We want UTC is, no, not that. Uh, ISO, is it ISO? I wonder if it, yeah, we can use ESO, right? So we can use ESO and then split it by T. So you can say to ESO string, split by T and take the first part. I think that should basically give us the, uh, yep, that's perfect. Okay, so I think it should understand that format. Uh, two, 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 two. Yep. Well, let's give it a shot. So essentially if I run the post request now, it should, assign, uh, let me close that. If we go to the data, if we go to prizes, it should assign the owners to all three prizes now, right? Ta-da, and if we rerun the query, and uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, something went wrong. Uh, why is it not assigning any owners? Ta -ta -ta, read mutation. So, but it does send us the done true back. Okay, so participants, yes, we are good on that. Uh, did it end the giveaway question? Or wait a second, even better question. Did it? Oh, you know what? It might be because of the query because I said lower than. Uh, Maybe we want actually lower or equal, right? Because we want to do it for today. But I guess it only matters for now because once we run it every midnight, it's not going to be lower. Yeah, L let's use LTE for now. But then later on, we can just drop the LT and just leave the LT. Okay, uh, are we good now? Did it update the things? Price? Nope, still now. Um, Okay, wait a second. Console log, let's have a look at the data here. Is it just returning empty set? No, okay, it does return the giveaways. Okay, so this seems fine. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Console, let's have a look. Log updating price, some console debugging. Then our res okay and give away okay let's try this way updating price id yes id so i do pass price and user did i is that a user am i using the correct variable name yes price user owner user that seems correct Updating giveaway function to promise. Oh, oh God, how many did I forget? I forgot to do to promise. Of course, this is not gonna run because we are not actually executing it. God damn it. Okay, there we go. I think now it should work, right? Yes, 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 yes. And yep, that actually seems to be working. So let's, uh, Update the prizes, rerun the query, and okay, for some reason, for the giveaway one, it updated successfully. And the giveaway one is now, okay, both are now ended, so it did update this correctly. Why did it not update the prizes? Uh, foreign key violation, insert or update and table price, prize owner F key, okay. User for updating prize ID three, ID six, user four. Wait a second. So winner is so I'm saying updating price. This is the price thing, and this is the give. Oh, right, okay. I'm using the wrong uh so it should be winner user. This is what we want. Okay. And I should also 
Well, I mean, it doesn't, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so we're using ID, so that's fine because it's participant, like the, part nah, nah, that is not fine. So that should be user ID. So we should check the user, right? So that that is how we should do that. Okay. Let us roll back the changes and try it again. So this is false. And this, uh, okay, no, no, this one, this one is false as well. So giveaways are now not updated. Owner is null. So all of them are null. Okay, so if we run it again, that should say no error here, no error here, no error here. Yes, that seems like it actually worked. Run the query. We got the owners. Giveaways, both of them are closed and uh, yeah, it seems like it's working. Cool. So that is working. So what, the only thing we need to do now is, okay, first of all, we need to remove all this console logging from here because uh, honestly, nobody cares. We also don't really care about the results of it so long as it's not an error. Uh, all right. And then what we need to do is we need to say, okay, we need a cron trigger. That is gonna be, um, what do we use? Wait a second, is it still in my, in my clipboard somewhere? Server close, server update, um, no. We use the action, uh, what was it? Action base API, and then it was, uh, it was pick winners. Right, so that's what we do as pick pick giveaway winners and we run it every midnight and the payload is just empty basically create azure console is not able to reach your hasura uh, wait a second is it because i stopped the console again okay uh don't know cron triggers okay yeah yeah, yeah sure uh, that what cron triggers yes please thank you very much okay uh pick giveaway winners every midnight payload is empty advanced what is advanced oh you can pass headers number of retries retry interval okay so there's actually quite a few things you can do here Rating schedule trigger failed in cron pick uh, value for variable oh i did not restart okay Fair enough. I did not restart the Hasura, so it didn't pick up the uh, the environmental variable, so it still fails. So let me just kill it, restart it, and then it should start working. And then we're basically done here. It took a bit longer than I expected it because I yes, because because I make a lot of mistakes. But um, I think that should work. So let me reload that. Okay, pick giveaway winners. Giveaway winners, yes, we run it every midnight. Payload is empty. Free. Hey! Okay, pending events. So, yeah, okay, so this literally repeated. So, it's a that is very cool. It actually shows you the status and when it's gonna execute. And there's event logs and vacation logs. That is very fancy. I have not used that feature before, so that actually looks really good. Okay, um, that's that's actually it. Giveaway is done. So, okay, you know. <laughs> in a very stupid way, but um, what we can do as well is we can show what is going on here. I guess I need to re re log in, right? Because I restarted the Hasura and probably the old tokens are now dead. So let me re log in. What we can do is we can actually um, show the ah uh, there we go okay session token yes okay that is a problem so we basically need to say that we don't have it we don't have it that's perfectly fine come on now okay sign in sign in with github reload the page where are my giveaways all oh, right, because we're selecting the giveaways that are not finished, but they are finished now. Okay, um, let's, that is fine. Pick winners, that is okay. So let's get open user giveaways. Let's say, say user 
prizes, right? So we basically want to show user prizes. We want to show the user, whatever the user has won, right? So we go to API, we go here, we say, okay, user prizes, um, giveaway prize, ID, name, description. Well, I can literally just say that, right? So we uh, created that as well. And we actually don't really care about any filtering because the Hasra will do it for us. We literally say, hey, show me everything I want, right? And here in the giveaways, we're just gonna do this. Const prizes results use query and that is going to be query user prizes pause so don't run it if we don't have a user const user prizes is going to be use memo prizes results data and this is going to be giveaway prize this is going to be from prizes results yes Okay, and uh, this is giveaways, and then we can just say, okay, this is gonna be like H1 plus name. I guess H2 is a better semantically here, right? Text to Excel, EY4, your prizes. We literally say map prize. Um, class name. So H three, I guess this price. What did we use their name? And then uh, there is the React markdown with pros right over here for description. That's uh, literally all we want to show. And uh, we need to import React markdown. I think my user actually wants something, so we should see some uh, results here now, right? And uh, user prizes map is under, yeah, okay. So we need to check that they actually exist. That is perfectly valid. Your prizes, why are my prizes? Did I, did I win anything? Always prizes, so my user ID is what? Uh, three. Oh, I guess I didn't win anything. <laughs> no, I, I should rig my own system to at least win something every time, right? Owner three, okay, let's do it this way. No field modified. What do you mean no modified? There you go. Okay, if we reload that, we should see one price. Uh, it kinda, okay. Uh, this should be flex column. There we go. Um, that looks... Class name, text, XL. Yeah, kind of like that. I mean, obviously the design part is like still would need a lot of work, but it does seem to be working just fine. Uh, so let me maybe, whoops, let me maybe do a bit of styling over here and say, okay, open giveaways. Basically what I want to do here is I want to say, I guess if user giveaways length zero and public giveaways length zero, I want to say div no open giveaways, right? So we just say, hey, there's actually nothing right now. Yep, that looks uh, perfectly fine. Okay. And it actually seems to work. So I guess I'll just commit everything and we can wrap it up here for today. Um, I would need to still, I probably will take some time to, um, okay, let me first commit the front end. Uh, where are we? We are in the front end right now and this is all Hasura stuff. Okay, um, git commit, implement basic give aways UI. Okay. And for Hasura, we actually need to 
We can add metadata, we can add Docker Compose, but we do need to um, MPX has roughly migrate squash. So we need to squash the migrations into one because I don't want to have like 25 different migration files for just one feature. Giveaways. Okay, and we want to squash from this. Okay. Uh, do not delete anything just yet. Uh, let's just visually check that the new migration actually looks fine. Okay, there's our giveaways migration up. So trade trigger, yes, that looks fine. Prizes, participants, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we can we can actually remove that and regenerate it again. Uh, I mean, I guess we can just uh, no. If we generate it again without removing it, it will use it as well. So we need to kill it, regenerate, and then delete it. And there we go. There is our migration. Get status. Get ads. Okay. Commit implement basic <coughs> apologies giveaways uh functionality fun funchi how do you spell it functionality in Hasura is what I'm trying to spell god damn it okay and uh that's it so I will deploy it a bit later on to the production it's not live yet so I would need to roll in this Migration, apply metadata, and then deploy the new website version. Currently using the ExoFrame for that. But yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, feel free to throw that into the chat right now. If not, then we can wrap it up here and continue next week with uh, Twitter bot, I guess. So the next step would be writing the Twitter bot to uh, essentially uh, ingest the Twitter tweets and then filter them with machine learning. Do I recommend VSL2? Yes, for the most part. It has some minor caveats, but it's actually really good. So I'm using it as my daily driver for primary software development work for well, web development most of the time, a bit of machine learning with Python and uh, been very happy with it. So like aside of, you know, small issues that pop up now and then with typically there are workarounds available on GitHub almost immediately, which is kind of cool. Uh, everything's been working great. So it's like, it's a really good option if you don't want to fiddle with Linux and if you don't like Macs uh, for whatever reason, basically. It's pretty solid. Okay, um, right, I pushed that. Uh, so yes, that is basically it for my site. Again, the website is deployed under bxjs.dev. The code is on GitHub if you are interested. As I said, I've actually deployed the GraphQL playground, so you can go ahead and play with GraphQL with the bxjs episode links if you want to, uh, which I think is pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's basically it from my side. So if you missed any of that, as usual, the VOD will be available on Twitch and on YouTube immediately. That's it from my side. So thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. And I see you next time.